Um, other than that, what else have I been doing? I watched the the Beatles documentary, uh, Let It Be. The Beatles are very good, aren't they? Oof, what a band. They've got some great songs. Very, very talented bunch of young men. <laughs> in, in all seriousness, my uncles kind of put me off the Beatles because they just won't shut up, shut up about them. They won't. Any, any kind of new music that you play to them like they'll listen to all kinds of music but there's always there's always some kind of strand that ties everything back to the beatles you know it doesn't matter what it is it's um i'm just gonna turn the tv off because it's distracting me there's a uh, house of uh what's it called is it called house of house of quiz house of games and i'm just looking at the questions don't do that adam don't do that concentrate um yeah uh, i love the beatles but there's a there's a knee-jerk reaction i have when someone is so adamant that a band is that is the best band that have ever existed you have to you have to you have to question it of course you have to question it you can't just take that as what what i end up doing is i end up going yes they were good my my, my position is they were great. They were really great, but they weren't. They didn't exist in a vacuum. They had their influences. I'm sure there were people when the Beatles came out that were going, you know, being a bit wanky and going, "Oh, well, they're just copying, I don't know, some other older band." Everyone has their influences. That's all I'm saying. And uh, but I will say, I'm just like, I can't remember how long it is. This documentary, but it's on Disney Plus. And it's the um, the making of an album or something like that. I don't. Even, they the band don't even know what they're doing. They're just making this documentary of them practicing and, and writing songs together. And the whole thing is like them discussing like, what is this thing? Are we are we doing an album? Is this a film that we're doing? And then someone has the idea that they perform a few songs on the roof, and it was uh, their last ever public performance, which I didn't know because I was ne I was never like properly into the Beatles but um, I'm just going to change this stream title to just chatting just because you never know you never know someone might wander in and then I've got them then I've got them and then I'll change it to the game that I'm playing but I'm going to carry on playing the uh, Plague Tale Innocence it's alright I'm kind of enjoying it so yeah even they don't know what, what it is that they're working towards and i just love watching artists put something together it's and and not that my opinion matters but i did think fucking hell they can they can really <laughs> like paul mccartney i've always thought because i see him nowadays and i'm like yeah he's, he's kind of he seems like he's a bit past it but i'm not saying i'm not saying he is past it but you watch him sort of in his in his prime don't really like that term but him and john lennon like the way they work together and obviously george and ringo i think i i underestimated them with a, a, a i've been hardened and and full of cynicism over the years but i blame my uncles i blame them because every time we have a family get together the guitars come out and don't get me wrong they're all very they're all very talented men they can play the guitars very well my uncles i mean but they, they won't play anything post 75 or like early 80s maybe the smiths so like around that era it was a captivating watch and i'm no super fan either how you doing mate good to see you back it's great wasn't it really really good and you'll know what i'm talking about when i say that my uncles put me off the beatles they're not put me off but just it's like can we it's that same familiarity uh, breeds contempt and it's through no fault of the Beatles. But I also, <laughs> it's like a bit of a, when people say, oh, Oasis just ripped off the Beatles. I almost, I just want to say, just to troll people, like, yeah, Oasis were a better band, actually. They're a better band. I, I prefer Oasis. I think they've got better tunes, which is all completely subjective. But uh, Ringo Starr as well, he's a really decent drummer. I always thought that he was just a bit of a, 
a bit of a spare part, like kept just kept time, didn't do anything too uh, intricate or kind of awe-inspiring. He doesn't like the the records don't really sound that heavy on the drum side of things, but when you watch him play, he's really yeah technically he's really astute and and on it with my sort of limited knowledge but uh yeah john and john and paul man john and paul what a uh what a combo ringo's now my favorite beetle is he really why is that i liked the moment where he just said um so they were talking about something really serious and ringo just went i farted by the way i just i didn't want to sit here in silence <laughs> I thought that was that was a nice, a nice touch there, Ringo. You've owned you've owned that. You've owned it. Yeah, I did. Uh, like I say, anything that's it's just a peek behind the curtain, and especially with a band like that, and the the way they wrote songs together, and how at ease they all are with each other. And obviously, that's towards the end of their career. So I, I don't know anything about the chronology, how long they've been together at that point, but they're all just so at ease with their instruments and giving each other notes like i've been in a few bands and it's really there's something really tentative about telling somebody how to play something you don't get it takes a while or it takes a really it takes a lot of trust i think to go no don't don't play that no go back to what you're playing before right and then they'll play it and then you go no 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 stop stop no it's blah 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 blah, blah. it's like it's that trust that someone's not going to be precious about how to actually do something because he sat quietly in the corner and kept himself to himself you respect that do you is that he's earned your respect <laughs> he does though to be fair there's no there's no getting around the fact that the the drums really just kind of tie everything together there's no there's no mad drum solos or like really um distinctive standout Beatles drum riffs it's all very well mixed and I think that that is a talent in itself because I know from being in bands myself that I, it's always there's a temptation to over egg everything to put in all your ideas into one song and when I like I don't I don't really drum anymore but when I was in uh, like rock bands it would be like see how many see how many riffs we can get into one song and everyone would so there's no um cohesiveness it's <laughs> play this play this segment and this segment and this segment it's like five or six different riffs in one song so there's a lot to be said for sort of holding back and just just riding the wave man just riding the wave and just supporting the whole supporting the bigger picture and I've gotten back into some uh, classic Beatles singing a bit before in the shower. Bloody, bloody, bloody great songs. What a cracking bunch of lads. And what bloody numpty goes and shoots John Lennon? Why? What, 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 why? Why? I mean, I don't want to get dark or anything, but let me just uh, Google this. How long after is John favorite Beatles song? Um, that's a very good question. I'm going to say Michelle is up there, or yeah, Michelle. Oh, I don't know. You know, I'm not. I don't know enough of that. I'm sure there's better songs than that, but that's or um, something. It's a pretty good tune. I never, I never like delved into all this stuff, but I think I'm gonna. I think I'm gonna. What about yourself? Yeah, what I want to know is how long after "Let It Be." Is that what it's called? The "Let It Be" album. It, John Lennon, died because I know John Lennon. I had a mate at college who was really, he was really into the Beatles, and he was. He was the first band I was in, actually, and he was the guitarist, and he he could play pretty much everything. Um, and he was really into John Lennon's "In My Life." We can work it out. Don't let me down. Oh, that's good. Those are very good. It's hard, isn't it? It's hard to choose. They're all solid, though. 
we could it's the the harmonies as well are so when you watch them playing it's they don't look like they're even trying to sing in harmony with each other but when you try and sing along to them or you pick out the different harmonies they're literally dozens of bangers yeah that's the that's the strap line on their compilation literally dozens of bangers by the beatles oh the reason this is why john lennon hated let it be um and maybe this is just clickbait i don't want to know that though let me don't let me get sidetracked is let it be is the 12th and final studio album by the beatles on in 1970 Oh, hang on. Uh, why is that in French? Why are you showing me that in French? Let's show you what, that's what I can see. Uh, ba -ba -ba -da. No, there's too much writing there. There's too much writing. Do you know, Wee Man? Do you know? What I want to know is how long after that, let me just say, what, what year did John Lennon die? Oh, right, so 10 years after that. So how old was he? He was 40. Thank you for the follow, Nathan. Hope you're well. Welcome in. Welcome in, welcome in. We're just talking about uh, the new Beatles documentary. How are you doing, man? So he was 40. I thought he was quite young. I wasn't sure how old he was. It's, it's... So they'd split up before he was shot. So they'd done, I mean, they'd done, the Beatles had happened. It wasn't like, this sounds like I'm sort of making excuses. <laughs> what I'm trying to say is he wasn't, he wasn't like at the height. Well, what did you make of it, Nathan? Did you enjoy it? Um, yeah, he wasn't like gunned down in his prime, which is what I thought. I thought it was, I wasn't sure where in the Beatles canon of work, was it cut, like, I didn't know, was it cut short? Was it, do you know what I mean? But um, yeah, you enjoy it then. Yeah, so I'm gonna go back and, uh, and re-listen to some stuff. Oh, just open it back up again without the cynicism of uh, of it all being spoiled by my uncles by just telling me how great they are. I'm going to make my own mind up. And even though I agree with them, I want to dig into the back catalogue. That's what I want to do. Like all the older stuff. Because I know there's some good stuff there. Um, do you have any favourite songs, Nathan? Top three favourite uh, Beatles songs, if you had to choose? In my life, we can work it out and don't let me down. Ah. Uh, uh, certified bangers certified bangers yeah good shout there good shout good shout have i got anything else to report um not really i'm gonna there's a few bits that i'll sort of chat about when i delve into the game i mean k-pop person who likes the beatles how old am i <laughs> what about yoko being there <laughs> That's cool. K-pop is Korean pop, if I'm right. Which I've never really heard. I've heard a lot about it. Heard good things. Good things about it. What about Yoko being there? That's interesting, isn't it? Um, She was very... No, top three songs. Hey Jude, don't, don't let me down. And Yesterday. Yesterday is beautiful, isn't it? I wish I could play them on here, but I'm not allowed. I'll get... I'll get... I'll be right. I get stricken by the copyright people. Yeah, Yoko's singing. That's uh, it's something. It's something. I sent a, a message. I was watching it, and I messaged my mate saying, um, saying exactly that. Like Yoko Ono, spot it. She's got a lovely voice, hasn't she? And I don't. I think it's. it's uh, I don't want to be harsh or anything. She's just very, she's very hard to read, isn't she? She was very. She seems quite removed and sort of in the background. But her and John Lennon are obviously madly in love. It's quite sweet. 
She didn't, yeah, she didn't seem to be the problem she's made out to be, but I just couldn't help wanting her out of that room. <laughs> It's it's a hard one to read, isn't it? You don't know what the if there are any tensions there around that. I suppose it's like it's not it's it's purely speculative. How um, how tensions in the band was sort of were there tensions in the band? I don't know. The tabloids obviously made a good dined out on that one for quite a while, didn't they? Um, it's it's very anyway. My mate said that he he loves Yoko Ono. She's great. Very. Very uh, punk, I suppose you'd call that punk, wouldn't you? Let's just have a little. Let's have a little. Uh, let's give you a little sample of what what it is we're talking about here. Yes, she is. Keep it respectful in the chat, please. I mean, I don't. Right, good, good. Well then, I don't know her. Obviously, <laughs> obviously, you might be surprised to hear this, guys. But I, personally, I don't know uh, Yoko Ono. I actually don't know her personally. So, what? Why do you keep muting yourself? Stop it. So, who am I to pass judgment? However. My humble opinion, that is not talent. That's not what I would call talent. Um, but it is bold. It's an expression, isn't it? It's an expression, and it's. I understand it's not. It's not supposed to be tuneful. It's not necessarily supposed to be likable. Not supposed to be enjoyable. Um, you're not. Maybe you're not supposed to understand it. Maybe you're supposed to dislike it. That's the interesting thing about art, is that it doesn't have to be good. <laughs> good in the sense of, uh, I don't know. Well, the Beatles, I suppose. I think it, it's a very, there's a very hard contrast, isn't there, between Yoko Ono and then. Because when they're jamming and stuff in the documentary, and then they sort of have... Uh, Nobody's getting anything out of it. Well, that that kind of brings us onto a broader aspect of what what art is. When does art become self-indulgent? And that's the subject I I really love talking about because you need you need an audience. At, I kind of surmise with art, don't you? You do need an audience, and it's about communicating something to them. Now, if you're subverting something and the audience are the intention is to disrupt something or to work against something the question then becomes are you doing this because you can't do anything better or is this something that you're doing deliberately to make a point I suppose you judge each case by its own merit but that's the the knee-jerk response to that kind of stuff is she's got no talent so she's just shouting she wants to be heard so she's just shouting the same way that any punk bands would be labeled like an old an old sort of fuddy-duddy would go oh it's just noise they're not even they're not even playing proper songs and in a way that's the whole point isn't it the whole point is to say i don't give a fuck what you think so in that sense she's doing a great job um but in terms of enjoying it no no it's not enjoyable is it not enjoyable not nice on the 